Hi students, welcome to the lesson Agrarian Social Structure. Let us start with the introduction. An agrarian society or agricultural society is any community whose economy is based on producing and maintaining crop and farmland. Another way to define an agrarian society is by seeing how much of a nation's total production is in agriculture. In an agrarian society, cultivating the land is the primary source of wealth. Such a society may acknowledge other means of livelihood and the work habits, but the stresses the importance of agriculture and farming. Agrarian societies have existed in various parts of the world as far back as 10,000 years ago and continue to exist today. But they have been the most common form of socio-economic organization for a human history. Now let us start with the objectives. One. To learn the meaning of agrarian social structure. 2. To know the role of agrarian economy in national economy. 3. To understand the transformation in agrarian social structure. Now let us study the meaning of agrarian social structure. Agriculture allows a much greater density of population than can be supported by hunting and gathering and allows for the accumulation of excess product to keep for winter use or to sell for profit. The ability of farmers to feed large numbers of people whose activities have nothing to do with the material production was the crucial factor in the rise of surplus specialization, advanced technology and the hierarchical social structures like inequality and standing armies. The agrarian societies thus support the emergence of a more complex social structure. In agrarian societies, some of the simple correlations between social complexity and environment begin to disappear. One view is that Humans with this technology have moved a large step toward controlling their environments, are less dependent on them and hence show fewer correlations between the environment and technology related traits. A rather different view is that as societies become larger and the movement of goods and people the cheaper they incorporate an increasing range of environmental variation within their borders and trade system. But environmental factors may still play a strong role as variables that affect the internal structure and history of a society in complex ways. Until recent decades, the transition to farming was seen as an inherently progressive one. People learned that planting seeds caused crops to grow and this new improved food source led to larger populations, sedentary farm and town life, more leisure time and so to specialization, writing, technological advances and civilization. It is now clear that agriculture was adopted despite certain disadvantages of that life cycle. Archaeological studies show that health deteriorated in populations that adopted cereal agriculture. Returning to pre-agricultural levels only in modern times, this is in part attributed to the spread of infections in crowded cities. But it is largely due to a decline in dietary quality that accompanied the intensive cereal farming. People in many parts of the world remain hunter-gatherers until quite recently, though they were quite aware of the existence and methods of agriculture, they declined to undertake it. 
many explanations have been offered usually centered around a particular factor that forced the adoption of agriculture such as environmental and the other factors. Agriculture is the predominant occupation of the people of India. Not only the village people sustain their livelihood from agrarian products, but also many urban industries transform the agrarian products into the industrial one. Thus, agrarian economy plays an important role in the national economy of India. Like any other society, Indian agrarian society was in a flux. Indian peasantry was a homogeneous category and the Indian village as a republic as well as a self-sufficient unit at the time of British period. But plurality in culture, lifestyles, ethnic composition, religion and language as well as the patterns of lifestyles, occupations, land holding, inheritance and succession and so on is an inherent character of the Indian peasantry. Indian society had been a stratified society. Caste and Jajmani system played an important role in the society. Hierarchy and inequality were deep rooted. The peasants were the worst sufferers of the British policies, mainly by their policy of land revenue and industry. The British tried to change the Indian subsistence economy into a market economy mainly for the two reasons. First, with the introduction of new kind of land management system that is the Raitwari and Zamindari, the peasant producers had to pay land taxes, they had to produce more for payment of the land taxes. Second is the reorientation of the objectives of agricultural production. This agricultural production had catered for the needs of the total community rather than a particular community. Moreover, the home based rural industry had also suffered due to industrialization. The worst sufferers were the lower caste, the lower class peasantry in particular and peasantry in general. The Indian nationalist leaders mobilized the Indian peasantry to fight against the British imperialist power. Several peasant movements were organized during the pre-independence period. At that time, the study of Indian peasantry was basically initiated by Indian nationalist leaders. Of course, a good number of social scientists also contributed to the same. However, the study of agrarian social structure did not emerge as a major area of research in Indian anthropology. It might be owing to their preoccupation with tribal society under the guidance of the British anthropologist. Let us understand the concept of agrarian social structure. The agrarian relations represent an important area of social life deeply rooted in the history of India since it is related to four basic questions. First, it is related to the land, one of the principal sources of people's livelihood. Secondly, it is related to the producers, the peasants who form the major section of the population. Thirdly, the question of production that is agriculture with its technology and methods. It is also involved which is the genesis of human civilization. And finally, it involves the social relations between the producers and consumers ultimately. Rural and urban areas, the concept agrarian structure is multidimensional studied by the political scientist, historians, sociologists and social anthropologists from different perspectives like the productivity, development, technology, political movements, 
stratification, class structure and so on. The dictionary meaning of the word agrarian is stated as pertaining to cultivated or agricultural land and its tenure related to or connected with the land property relating to cultivated land or its management or distribution. The term structure has different connotations. Generally, a structure denotes articulation of a set of or the products which are mutually distinct but also interrelated to form a whole. Different scholars have defined the term agrarian structure in different ways. Agrarian structure refers to the institutional framework under which agrarian operations carried out and broadly covers the system of land tenure and land tenancy. Agrarian structure means all mutual relations among the landlords, the tenants and agriculture laborers. To him, the agrarian structure is not an external framework within which various classes function, but rather it is the sum total of the ways in which each group operates in relation to each other group. Some of these relations are defined and enforced by the law, others are customary. In India, land plays a vital role in the means of production. On the basis of ownership of land, social groupings are formed and the interrelations of these groups are governed mainly by two customary laws of the society. The network of these relations is structure. According to Damley, 1993, the defines agrarian structure as relationships between two groups, those who control lands and those who labor or use the land. To him, agrarian structure consists of different sets of relationships, which in turn are influenced by the different capacities and socio-legal statuses in which people holding them function in relation to cultivable land. Stein also views that agrarian structure as an agrarian system being a social arrangement involving the uses of land and its products. It is to those pertinent and the normative relationships among social groups that one turns first. The above definitions suggest that the central theme of agrarian structure is the relationships of the different social groups based on land and landed property. However, recently a broader view is expressed by Rogley, Harris White and Bose. By agrarian structure, they include the agricultural commerce both local and international, of bureaucracies, of exchange, arrangements in land, water and labor as well as changing ideologies of gender, caste and ethnicity and to institutionalized exchange arrangements for land, lease and labor. Higher and then the integral aspect has expanded the concept of agrarian structure. Agrarian structure thus denotes the mutual relations between the different social groups engaged in the production process. Agrarian societies are especially noted for their extremes of social classes and rigid classes mobility. As land is the major source of wealth, social hierarchy develops based on land ownership and not labor. The system of stratification is characterized by these three coinciding contrast, governing class versus the masses, urban minority versus the peasant majority and literate minority versus illiterate majority. These results in two distinct subcultures, the urban elite versus the peasant masses. Moreover, this means that cultural differences within 
agrarian societies are greater than the differences between them. The land owning strata typically combine government, religious and military institutions to justify and enforce their ownership and support elaborate patterns of consumption, slavery, set of peonage is commonly the lot of the primary producers. Rulers of agrarian societies do not manage their empire for the common good or in the name of the public interest, but as a piece of property they own and can do with as they please. The caste systems as found in India are much more typical of agrarian societies where the lifelong agricultural routines depend upon a rigid sense of duty and discipline. The emphasis in the modern West on personal liberties and freedoms was in large part by a diminishing margin of utility in that the best lands for farming are usually a reaction already under cultivation, forcing people to move into less and less arable to the sleep and rigid stratification of agrarian societies. Within agrarian societies, the primary source of energy is plant biomass. This means that like hunter-gatherer societies, agrarian societies are dependent on natural solar energy which flows and thus agrarian societies are characterized by their dependence on outside energy flows low energy density and the limited possibilities of converting one energy form into another. Energy radiating from the sun is primarily caught and chemically fixed by the plant photosynthesis. Then it is secondarily converted by animals and finally processed by human use. However, unlike hunter gatherers, agrarianism's basic strategy is to control these flows. For this purpose, agrarian systems mainly uses the living organisms which serve as food, tools, building material, mechanical devices, making use of wind or running water also can be used to convert natural energy flows. The amount of energy an agrarian society can use is restricted due to low energy density of solar radiation and the low efficiency of technology. Let us understand agrarianism. Agrarianism most often refers to a social philosophy which values agrarian society as superior to industrial society and stresses the superiority of a simple rural life as opposed to the complexity and chaos of urbanized industrial life. In this view, the farmer is idealized as self-sufficient and thus independent as opposed to the paid laborer who is vulnerable and alienated in modern society. Moreover, agrarianism usually links working the land with morality and spirituality and links urban life. Capitalism and technology with a loss of independence and dignity while fostering vice and weakness, the agricultural community with its fellowship of labor and cooperation is thus the model society. Agrarianism is similar but not identical with back to the land movements. Agrarianism concentrates on the fundamental goods of the earth, communities of more limited economic and political scale than in modern society and on simple living even when this shift involves questioning the progressive character of some recent social and economic developments. Thus, agrarianism is not industrial farming with its specialization on products and industrial scale. The meaning of the phrase agrarian system may not be immediately clear, but what is implied is something more specific than the study of peasant societies 
and cultures. As this is generally understood by anthropologists, the term peasantry has variety of reference, but it is most meaningfully used to describe a more or less homogeneous and undifferentiated community of families characterized by small holdings operated mainly by family labor. The study of agrarian system has been taken up by mentioned earlier by anthropologist, sociologist and economist. On a broader plane, the agrarian system as is conceived by social scientists in general has been related to 1. Land and its utilization and 2. Productive purposes. According to him, the study of agrarian systems will center around the problem of land and its utilization for productive purposes. In a land based social and economic system, the significance of this kind of study hardly requires emphasis. The land problem in India and for that matter the study of agrarian social structure revolves around two major issues as under 1 technological arrangements and 2 social arrangements. 1 technological arrangement means the management of land. It includes land ownership, control and use of land. Technological arrangement is discussed in relation to variations in ecological conditions. In other words, land is looked in terms of the geography which surrounds the land. The ecological setting of agriculture in India is highly variable. The diverse nature of ecological conditions in India has been described by Betel. There are areas of heavy rainfall and areas with hardly any rainfall. There are irrigated and unirrigated areas. Irrigated areas themselves differ according to the dependability of irrigation. The different regions show different patterns of diurnal and seasonal variations in humidity, temperature and sunlight. All these factors have a direct bearing on the kinds of crops that can be cultivated and the technology employed in their cultivation. The technological arrangements thus include ecological conditions along with the new agriculture technology such as water pumps, thresher, chemical manure, improved seeds, etc. Two, Another aspect of agrarian system is that of social management. It includes land control and land ownership. It is found that the Indian agricultural communities have recently been highly stratified. It shows that there is close relationship between the system of stratification and the division of work. Agrarian structure in India have always been uneven despite the abolition of intermediaries, not much substantive change in agrarian relations has come. The uneven structures of land holdings have also resulted in diverse land tenure systems. The land tenure system according to Sharma has greatly affected the social structure. The variations in the relationship between land tenure system and social structure created an uneven feudal order in the pre-British period and British periods. The shadow of colonial and feudal inequality is still seen by us in various aspects of society. Sociologists and anthropologists who have recently studied agrarian system have very strongly argued that changes in land relations have affected the stratification pattern of villages. The crucial aspect of agrarian structure is the control over land. It is the basis of agrarian stratification. When agrarian social structure is discussed invariably, 
we refer to land ownership, land control and use of land. Such an approach to land helps us to find out agrarian hierarchy. What has happened so far is that the dominant caste who have control over major portions of land suppress and exploit the subordinated classes. Land control is the basis of the agrarian hierarchy and therefore the means by which the dominants have subordinated in the village. Small resources like a home site of one's own and even a very small plot of productive land can affect a powerful liberation of the subordinated untouchables from total and arbitrary dependence on their oppressor. Yet, Another aspect of rural stratification is the pattern of cultivation adopted by the peasantry. If cultivators take to crops which require hard labor, naturally it would require larger number of agricultural laborers. In the states of Punjab and Bihar where paddy is grown, larger number of laborers are hired. Even landless laborers migrate from Bihar to Punjab for transplanting paddy. The agrarian hierarchy therefore is the resultant of the crops grown by the peasantry. The rural India's basic problem today is understanding of agrarian system. Control over land determines the rural hierarchy. What is interesting is that the state does not impose any income tax on the far production. As a result of this state policy, those who control larger portions of land benefit the most. The rural agrarian hierarchy has today become more complicated owing to the land policy adopted by the state. But the state land policy as we have in India today has not evolved overnight. Now let us sum up. An agrarian society or agricultural society is any community whose economy is based on producing and maintaining crop and farmland. In an agrarian society, cultivating the land is the primary source of wealth. Such a society may acknowledge other means of livelihood and work habits, but agrarian structure thus denotes the mutual relations between the different social groups engaged in the production process. Agrarian societies are especially noted for their extremes of social classes and rigid social mobility. As land is the major source of wealth, social hierarchy develops based on land ownership. The agrarian system as is conceived by social scientists in general has been related to land and its utilization and the productive purposes.